Glenview District 30 that have been doing two dual roles. They've been really looking at developing the evaluation process, but understanding that you can only be able to truly use the evaluation in an environment that really understands what the work is. And so they're going to share about how they have really tried to embed the deep understanding of the framework into their um, current process. Good morning. I'm Jamie Amhouse. Um, I'm a learning specialist uh, in special education in Northbrook Glenview School District 30. And this is... My name is Ann Cummins. I'm a fifth grade teacher in District 30. Our district, we uh, began as um, a by the teacher initiative. Um, and we are a very high performing school district in Cook County, which of course we're very proud of. So when we bring up the question of change to our staff, um, the question always remains, why are we making changes? We, we are already doing a great job. Why fix what seems to not be Two years ago, um, in negotiations of a contract that was about nine years old, and an evaluation system that was at least 30 years old, the teachers voiced the desire to make a s systemic change to an outdated, limited evaluation system. There really were no guidelines that were set in terms of a rubric, and there was not continuity between the evaluators that were appraising the teaching. So situations of ineffective practice and varied accountability did continue, even though, of course, as I said, we're very high achieving. But you know, some of that is just innate to the uh, students uh, which we teach. In no November of 2009, our committee that was uh, assigned as a standing committee by our superintendent attended the turn conference that highlighted Charlotte Anderson and the framework for teachers. And as a committee, we became extremely energized, but of course we were very overwhelmed. So we turned to CEC, and as I referred to Pam Ross over there, our archangel gave us guidance using the framework for teachers. And we've been continuing on our quest to revamp our system, which we thought would be a quick fix, but uh, now it's two years, in, or going, a year and a half for sure. And we see in listening to um, other presentations that people have been doing this for 10 years. So we know it's really a long-term uh, project. One of the most important things the committee knew that we needed to make sure of was that we had complete buy-in by certified staff. It was crucial that there was a clear understanding of the framework prior to implementation. We wanted to make sure we developed trust, getting teachers actively involved in the systemic change. And we want our teachers to be part of this change rather than just another new initiative that, as an educator, every year there are new things that are presented and it's kind of handed to you and there's really not enough training that takes place. So out of that, um, our committee decided that we wanted to give our teachers information about the framework for teaching um, deliberately and get have them gain an understanding of what the framework was um, because it's the tool, it's the definition of good teaching and so if we can share that definition and share an understanding, then we really foster a collaborative process. What we did was we designed uh, professional development activities monthly in our three school buildings. Um, the, the activities were designed by a central committee and we go out each month, we not go out, people in their own buildings conduct the professional development and we all sit on this evaluation committee. The purpose of our um, professional development, and I've got to just try to get my clicker here. Um, Mostly is to establish that shared vision that I think we all know is so important. If we're going to try to move forward, we all have to have a sense of where it is we want to go. If I know what my evaluator is coming in to see, now I can, you know, work toward achieving that that um, benchmark. One of the, the first things that we um, 
plan to do in our professional development is to help teachers um, gain that um, understanding of the domain, giving teachers a chance to understand the domains they now understand effective teaching. The second focus then was the levels of performance. So now that you know planning and preparation is a part of effective practice, that instruction, classroom environment, and professional responsibilities are the definitions of good practice, where do you fall in each of those domains? Look at the rubrics. Let's take it, you know, let's see how those rubrics relate to your practice. And then identify your strengths and your opportunities as a professional. And from those opportunities, think about what you might want to change or move forward with in your own practice. and through the summer and we, we needed to have something that really um, would make an impact on the teachers. So we decided, we have three institute days to start the year. We decided we'd take an entire institute day as we called it our kickoff, um, highlighting Charlotte Danielson's book, Enhancing Professional Practice. <coughs> groups. Um, it was kindergarten, fourth grade teachers, fifth through eighth grade teachers, and we had a book study for the entire day, just getting people really immersed into the framework for teachers. Then we set up uh, monthly professional development activities instead of having a um, staff meeting led by the principal just on general information about the school. It was a time that was already scheduled within the calendar, and we had specific activities planned for this professional development regarding the framework. We knew that the professional development was something that people had to buy into, so we did not make the monthly meetings mandatory. We, of course, encouraged people to come, and you know how it always ends up. As soon as somebody finds out there's a meeting, and they say to the, to the, they look around and there's no one in the hall, they figure they better go to a meeting that's going on. So our attendance was excellent, and um, we've just led people through many steps through the process of understanding the framework. We've been extremely impressed how quickly all of the teachers within the district have become reflective and sometimes negative as well as positive but you know that's a learning curve for all of us too in order to make it um, more effective and meaningful to everybody. This professional development plan came from our central evaluation committee so once we kind of started the process of adopting the frameworks we sort of um, we started in November and we made this decision about the PD in August, so it didn't come to us right away. And what's great about it is that because all members of the committee are a part of the planning process of the activities, what happens in each building is consistent. So we may not have the same meeting on the same day, but when we have that framework for teaching meeting, every, every team, and so it's often Jane, myself, and our um, principal, Terry Carmen, um, who run those activities, and then at our other elementary school, it will be teachers and administrators and an administrator from our team there, as well as in our middle school. One of the things that really struck me uh, was this last point that we need to debrief and refine activities to determine <coughs> the process for sharing information with districts. Uh, wide staff and I think you know it's all about the conversation so yesterday our committee had an all-day meeting we're getting ready to roll out our appraisal process on March 7th um, and we realized that our, our teachers are going to need some help with goal setting and so we can we already have the time in our calendar and so we went ahead and said okay our March and April meetings will we'll refine goal setting for our teachers because as we roll out this process March 7th they're going to want to know the what and the how of the process, but they're also going to need to work on goal setting, and we can't overwhelm them with all that information at once. 
Nadine Lee, who runs our mentoring program yesterday, had a great idea that just, let's just continue these framework for teaching meetings once a month going into next year. And then we can continue to provide that ongoing professional development or just allowing teachers to reflect on the goals that they've written and their progress toward those goals as they relate to the framework. Terry Carmen, our principal, is going to come up and just check us out here. Really shows it from our perspective in District 30 is that it's a combined effort between staff, uh, certificated staff, and administration. And we co lead, Ann and I co lead the committee, and it's really a, a wonderful opportunity for everybody to work together. So there's buying from administration and from staff. And we plan together, we present together, and it's not a top down initiative at all. So it starts from the bottom, and uh, we have a very collaborative uh, district, and the change process is moving along. So. I want to thank our teachers for what they do for us. 